So by now, it's not a surprise what a live action adaptation really is. And within just the past couple decades alone, it's practically been the era of these adaptations whether or not they're really good or bad. We've seen success from multiple source materials springing from comics like Marvel and DC to books such as Lord of the Rings, A Song of Fire and Ice, Harry Potter, to games even with the recent iteration of The Last of Us. But one that has been seemingly the most difficult to reconstruct and just recreate for that matter has been that of, well, you guessed it, anime. Anime ever since I can remember has been the media that is the most over the top. Therefore, when you try to adapt that from animation to live action, it never really works. But why is that? Well, it's like I said, things are just seemingly over the top and for the most part too inauthentic to our real world. With Marvel, it's easy to flip that from the comics into what we know as the MCU because of its setting and of course that these characters are from places that you and I grew up in. So their problems outside of the villain of the week is practically just one and the same as ours. Same could be said with Harry Potter, although in a world filled with magic, they still are set between the same issues we can all really connect with. If you think about it, that's what makes these adaptations really work. It's the connection between our relatability, which is why we love these universes so so much. With an anime, they tend to portray a similar message, but for some reason, Adapting everything around that message is just way too difficult. And some of you might be asking, why not just adapt the anime that aren't too unworldly? Well, we kind of already tried that with Death Note's live action, but we all know how that turned out. There's definitely a few anime out there related to a real world setting that without a doubt could be adapted into live actions given the proper crew and dedication for it. It could definitely work. And I for one have been wanting a live action version of Monster by Naoki Urasawa. I think either a film or television show for this series would be perfect. And to be honest with you, that's the key to it all. Having that synergy between your cast and crew is what's one of the most important aspects that a lot of people just seem to leave out. But it's been without a surprise that recently the One Piece live action has been a huge success. And I know I just went on about how it's already hard enough adapting the more realistic animes into live action. So why in this world would I be going on about the success of One Piece and its grand world if these grounded anime can't even do their adaptation right? Well, if you know anything about One Piece, you would know that it's not even remotely close to what the real world represents from a visual perspective. Although, from the very start of this production process, it has been that of a passion project and the synergy between not only the showrunners of the project, the cast and crew, but most importantly, even Echirio Oda himself made it a goal of theirs to bring the world of One Piece to the general public. Obviously, we all know just how successful the franchise of One Piece is being the biggest selling manga of all time, but that's just it. Not everyone is so interested in reading a manga or even watching an anime. A lot of people can easily be put off by the medium, so what better way to show One Piece for what it's for? And that's why we're here today, with the live action adaptation. A lot of the general eye is going to be a lot more inclined and just more interested for that matter to check out a series that's more realistic. That's just how regular people would like to consume their media. Which is fine, and it's entirely why the people behind this adaptation decided to tackle this challenge. Because for one, like I said, it's already difficult enough to adapt these other series. What makes you think that One Piece would be any different? And to tell you the truth, it's not that this series is the odd one out of the bunch. If anything, this is probably one of the most jarring series to tackle when transferring it to a live action adaptation. Compared to its peers over the years, we've seen all of these live actions fail time after time again. And for the most part, even within the anime community, we thought that it just wasn't meant to be. All hope was lost and it felt like bringing this medium over to live action was just simply impossible. But One Piece has clearly shown us why this curse has been lifted. And we can go on all day about Alita Battle Angel, but I just don't see the same love we've got for One Piece that I've seen for this other series and multiple other series that maybe some people might bring up into the conversation. But in my personal opinion, the live action adaptation of One Piece has truly been the one to break this curse for that matter. But let's just get into why. For starters, I think people need to understand for a live action to work, it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one adaptation. If anything, that's just something that's going to detriment your series in the long run. 
What's important to take from the source material is that of the key ideologies and messages of what your first season is trying to capture. And in this case of season one being the message of dreams. Throughout season one, it was apparent that Luffy needed a crew and following his journey, we went along finding each and every crew member individually, giving them reason for what they can carry to the team. And the factor behind that all was of course, a dream. Zoro becoming the greatest swordsman, Usopp becoming a brave warrior of the sea, Sanji finding the all blue, Nami creating a map of the world, and of course, Luffy becoming the king of the pirates. And for my manga readers out there, we know that that's not the only one. Dreams were a huge part about the East Blue Saga, and in terms of transferring that message from paper to the big screen, I think us fans can all collectively agree that was done just right. So compared to all these other live action series, these were never really done right, in my opinion for the most part, and instead, they would try to push their own message instead of paying homage to the source material. Instead of stealing the source material, One Piece decided to stick to its roots of its manga and strictly adapt the series of One Piece. Pretty ironic coming from the pirate series if you ask me, but hey, what do you know? Now, while that adaptation wasn't fully a strip of the manga, there were some definite changes, some of which being great add-ons to the series and some, well, not so great. These changes are of course all subjective, so I will be just throwing around what I enjoyed and what I didn't really find all that good. For one, I think Zoro's new introduction on Six's Island was the perfect way to not only introduce Zoro's character, but also to set up future plot points moving forward into Season 2 with the Baroque works. That along with honestly anything Buggy related, I think overall Jeff Ward's performance as Buggy was spot on, if not improved upon to his character, and even certain dialogue discussions between characters that improved on character chemistry. For example, I loved both Zoro and Nami's interactions together. I would have never before really paired them together in the manga in terms of character chemistry, but something with Emily Rudd and McKenyu and their chemistry just brought those characters further in my eyes. The Brate overall was just a great mix of adding and taking out attributes that did contribute much in the manga for myself personally. I think the live action did not to say handled it better, but definitely cut out what needed to be cut. In general, the live action brought more to the table in terms of early on world building within the series, and already, One Piece is a heavy world building driven series, so for them to continuously throw in easter eggs for us fans, it wasn't just beneficial for us, but it was beneficial for the world building of the live action series. A win win at that. It goes without saying the score was also in a league of its own creating a new identity of One Piece but also feeling the vibe for the series overall. But I think where this live action succeeded most though wasn't to per se say that it followed Oda's path but trained in his footsteps. This live action quite literally birthed its own identity while paying its respect to the source material. Yet even with its own identity, not every change is going to be for the best. So let me get into the ones and the changes that I just didn't solely think were the best. And to point out a few, even with these changes being made, I think it's solely because I am a anime and manga reader of the series, but the whole Garp, Kobe, and Helmeppo side plot wasn't necessarily bad. But I think because I am a reader of the series, it just felt off-putting. But I kind of understand why it was added, especially considering this is a television show, and at the end of the day, this is just a common trait used in TV to push the narrative forward without glazing over the main plot too much. Needless to say, these were some characters that just weren't really the characters we expected. Again, not to say these were completely bad changes. I don't think anything in this live action was a complete bad change. It just felt off because of myself being a manga reader. So other characters like Luffy and Usopp, just because of how ridiculous their characters are in the manga, there was something about it that just kind of felt off. And I think with time, we can see how this forms more into its own identity, which it kind of already has. I'm just not really used to it yet. It goes without saying though, that after over two full watch throughs of this adaptation, it's for certain it was a success overall, not just by the rest of, you know, you guys and I, but by Netflix as well. One Piece has finally broken the curse of live actions and has been confirmed for a second season. 
and people actually enjoyed it. And I'm glad that it just wasn't myself because I've been following the project since day one, but to see how far it's come is honestly a dream come true in of itself. Now, with this second season though, we can easily expect bigger and better things. Not to say we didn't already have the budget of Game of Thrones, but this only means that this adaptation was successful enough on its own to continue forward in the eyes of everyone. The live action accomplished its goals and now everywhere, people are consuming the series for probably their first time after watching the live action and experiencing what One Piece really has to offer. Even if this was a one-time thing, it still accomplished its goals, but now since we can see that the adventure will continue on, who knows what this live action will become. With the second season underway, who's to say there won't be more to come? It's obviously only going to get more difficult with more seasons to come through, that's only for certain. But the sea is really the limit for the grand adventure they're about to embark on and personally, I'm just glad it was with One Piece because if there's any series out there where people like you and I want to see this world come to life, why shouldn't it be with One Piece? Where all it really starts from is with a dream.